Today's topic is dream God's dream for you. Did you know that God was thinking about you before he created you? In fact, he was thinking about you before he created the universe, right? Ephesians 1, 4 says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God chose you and I. He thought about you and I before the foundation of the world, before he created the universe. Psalms 139.16 says, You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. God saw you in his mind. Before he created you, he saw you. He was thinking about you. And maybe you're wondering, okay, what was he thinking about, right? God was actually thinking of his dreams for you, your purpose, your calling, your influence in this world. He was thinking about the kingdom impact that he has destined and planned for you to live. And with, with the dreams, with, with the kingdom impact for you, he gave you all the gifts, the talents, the skills, the resources, the connections, the strategies, and everything that you need to fulfill what God had dreamt for you. And again, I'm going to read to you Psalms 139.16. It says, The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. I'm going to repeat that. It says, were already recorded in your book. Isn't that amazing? There is a book for you in heaven probably doesn't look like this, right? But this is a book and maybe thicker as well, right? But there is a book for you in heaven. And you know what? In that book, God wrote down all the details of his dreams for you, the destiny, the kingdom purpose for your life. He also wrote down all the gifts, the talents, the skills, the resources, the connections, the strategies, the desires, the passion, and many other things, right? that he had given you to accomplish his specific purpose in your life. Now, the challenge here is to get what's in the book about your life to manifest here on earth. The challenge is to faithfully choose, right? To cooperate with the Lord, to live the life that he had prepared for you, that he had dreamt of you to live here on earth. My brothers and sisters, understand that you are special. You are unique. You are set apart in the eyes of the Lord for specific dream and purpose. I read about this experiment that they did on snow. They've taken incredible photos of snow. And you know what? No two snowflakes look alike. At one time across a particular place, trillion of snow would cover the place. And again, no two snowflake look alike. Every snowflake is unique in itself because there's never been like it before and there will never be one like it afterwards. Isn't that amazing? We serve a God of variety. Now let's look at the universe. The universe is huge, right? But nothing is the same. No two planets look alike. Every planet is different in size, in looks, in color, right? They thought Neptune has eight moons and then they found out it actually has 14 moons. They thought Jupiter has 9 or 10 moons. They found out it has 79 moons. And no two moons look alike. Our God is such a God of infinite variety. No two, two stars look exactly the same, shine exactly the same. No two stars has exactly the same size. And yet there are trillions of stars out there in the universe. Now, if, if this is true for snowflakes, for moons, for stars, and for all of God's creation, this is true for you and I. You are unique. There's never been one like you before, and there will never be one like you afterwards. Did you know that Jesus also has a book in heaven? Hebrews 10, 7 says, Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. There is a book in heaven that chronicled 
what kingdom purpose Jesus would fulfill here on earth. Ephesians 2.10, and now this is talking about you and I. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, this word workmanship is from the original Greek word that means poem, tula in Tagalog. John 1.14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us here on earth. And you know what? Just like Jesus, right? Just like Jesus, we are God's poem. We are God's Word that was written down in heaven in a book, right? In a book that has been born and entered the earth. The poem, the word in the book became flesh when you were born. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you future and a hope. The thoughts of God for you, the dreams that he has for you that were written in your book are of peace and not of evil. Now, I have a question for you. For those who are parents, Right? If you are to write a book about the details and the future of your child, and you've been given this opportunity to write anything, right? anything that you want to write, and these are going to be your child's guide and roadmap for your, for your child's life, right? what would you write? What would you write? And let me ask you, would you write something like, at the age of 18, he will get terrible sickness because he needs to build his character. Or would you write something like, he will lose his firstborn child because this event will be a jumping board for his ministry. Or would you write something like, my son will live in lack for his entire adult life to keep his heart pure from the world's temptation. Would you write something in this nature for your child. I know I'm asking something silly, but I mean, personally for me, and I think for you as well, right? I wouldn't. I have three children, three boys, and I would never, ever want to see them sick, suffering, or in lack. I would definitely not even dare to write any of those things in a book. These are evil things. I would write I would I would write details and stories of success, yes, in their lives. I would write that they walk in divine health, that they're favored wherever they go, from man and from God. I would write that they will prosper and live in abundance in every aspect of their lives. And Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says that God has thoughts of peace and not of evil for us. This word peace is from the Hebrew word shalom which means completeness, safety, soundness, welfare, health, prosperity, quiet, tranquility, contentment. This is so good, right? Shalom is not limited to mean peace and quiet. It means so much more. And you know what? This is God's thoughts. This is God's dream for you and I. God's thoughts for you is to be complete. God's thoughts for you is to be safe and sound. His thoughts for you is to be in health. God's dream for you is to be content and prosper in every way. And anything contrary to these things, the Bible calls them evil, right? God's dream for you and I is to give you a future and hope. And this word hope means expectation of something good. Our future from our Lord, from our Father God, who's been thinking about us, right? The dreamy for you and I is bright. So my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you to be expectant of this future. Be excited about this future. We have a good God who has prepared a good future for you and I and for our families as well. His dreams for us are exceedingly abundantly above all that you can imagine or you can think of above any great expectations that you have for your life. This is how good our Father God is. And I hope this message encouraged you to seek God's specific 
unique and set apart dream for your life so that you can start dreaming with the Lord.